Hello there. Today I want to talk about psychoadaptation as it relates to learning new sports or just learning sports and fitness. My name is Daniel Rodriguez. If you don't know me already, I'm an associate professor of public health at LaSalle University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm also the founder of psychoadaptation.com and the whole theory of psychoadaptation which uh, if you've been reading my site or listening to my lectures, at least the first one, and perhaps others that I've done, psychoadaptation is a study of how one adapts to novel situations, and psychoadaptation also doesn't just look at the, at the adaptation itself, but is a way of living that can help one achieve higher goals and a and a higher sense of self, one that allows one to be able to manage life better and, and experience reduced stress. So that's one of the goals of this science, the science of psychoadaptation, or the theory, whatever you'd like to call it, has its origins in my research in psychology in general and human development, as well as public health. So. I'll be talking about it throughout this lecture. Today what I want to do is discuss though physical activity and sports skills. So as an older individual, I, I'm 52 years old, I love to engage in sport. I didn't have the luxury of playing a lot of sport when I was younger for many different reasons. One, I was always sick, I had bad asthma as a kid, <laughs> so you didn't make me want to cough when I think of asthma, yikes and I, I was frequently at the doctor and I always felt bad about that and didn't want to form and belong to any teams because I was afraid I would let people down. You know, I'd get sick and I wouldn't be able to play for a while. It was, it was rough, I was in and out of the doctor's office all the time. Plus my family didn't have a tremendous amount of money so we couldn't, I couldn't get the training that's necessary to be successful in sport. So like a lot of older individuals I found my happiness engaging in sport later in life, actually when I could afford to to participate more so get appropriate training. So for instance, I, I always loved tennis. I played since I was a little kid with my friends. Back in my day, we'd go and play on the public courts. We'd teach ourselves how to play. We were excited to watch players at the time, like the Borgs and the Macros, the Vilas's, and we, we'd want to replicate what they did, O'Connors, etc. And uh, we'd go out and play, but we didn't have the, at least myself and my, some of my friends, we didn't have the luxury of training. Uh, so it was only later on when, I think it was actually when I was 18 years old, where I took my first tennis lessons. And from that point on, I kept on playing. And I, I, I actually play all the time now. I still take lessons, and I'm finally achieving the game that I always wanted. Albeit, I would have been nicer to have it when I was like 12 or something instead of 52 but it's still very, very rewarding and I'm, I'm having a blast. I also engage in skiing and that's another sport that I couldn't afford when I was younger. And I also took my first lesson around 18, 19, I can't remember when, first time I ever went skiing, but I'm, I'm doing, I'm involved in, in it now, I'm learning to be a better skier and taking a ski racing course for adults where we do giant slalom training. It's very intimidating because it's First of all, you have to ski, in I'm in Pennsylvania, and we have to ski a double black diamond, which is very steep. It's very steep, and I ski a lot of different places. I've been to Colorado, I've been to um, New England a lot. I ski in New England a lot with my son, and um, it's the, the trail that I steep here, although it's shorter, it's quite steep, so it's still very intimidating. And plus we get icy conditions versus, say, out in the west where you get powder. So I'm engaged in that kind of learning, too, as well as other sports skills an exercise for sure. So I kind of understand what it's like to adapt to sport. So what I want to talk about now in particular is the process of psychoadaptation as it relates to learning new skills. Let's focus on something that I'm working a lot on now. Let's start with tennis. Okay, so my tennis game has blossomed and mainly because I have a good player to play with. I, I work out with a Division One athlete who's a Division One tennis player who's very, very good, who was also a coach at a, at a different training center at, at, in Newport at the Hall of Fame. He was a coach there too. So I mean, I've had and I've worked out with him for several years now, and I I, lo I love it. 
it's great. But what he does to me is he challenges me, not just physically, but mentally. The, the tennis is a, is a game that requires tremendous mental prowess. But however, before you can get to the mental part of the game, you have to actually master the skills. And, and that's the hardest part, like having a really good backhand, having a really good forehand. You have to master those before, and, and the fitness associated with it, before you can actually think about the, the mental side of the game. Because a lot of the errors one makes are actually skill related rather than psychological until one masters the skills. So how does psychoadaptation work with it in there? Well, when one is playing a match, the ball is going to go wherever the, your opponent wants it to go, especially with a good player. The good player has tremendous control as to where he can hit the ball or, 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 and, and in terms of his strategy. And in terms of myself, I have to be able to adjust to those different types of strategies that my opponent is using. And then, I, and it's only once I adapt to that person's style, which I call the constraints. And see, I, 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 when I discuss constraints, I talk about the situation itself. Each situation has its own set of constraints. These constraints can be construed as rules, rules that are formal or informal. And, and, in, t in a game like tennis, they're informal, right? These these rules. I mean, there are formal rules like how many points there are in a game, and who serves when, and etc. Chain of courts, and odd number of games, whatever. That that's fine. But but each player introduces a set of constraints of his own. So my opponent, like some of the players I play with, have very they, they hit with a flat ball. They don't put a lot of topspin on it. So that's when I'm playing with that person, I have to adapt to his style of hitting. Some people hit really hard, some people hit very soft. So in each situation has its own set of constraints and one has to keep on adapting to those constraints. As does learning, because just learning the game itself, one has to adapt to the constraints of each situation. For instance, when I hit a forehand, forehand has to be hit in a very, very specific fashion, right? And I like I like hitting with a lot of top spin. To generate that top spin I have to hit I have to have a really good racket head speed, right? Really stay with that ball for a long time. And also, when I'm playing with a good player who can move me around, I have to be able to do the, get that racket head speed, get myself in the right position, get low, because that's one of the areas that I fail in. I'm not low enough when I'm hitting the ball. Get low enough so I can have the ball travel at a higher trajectory over the net, and I can get a deeper shot. But to do that, I have to set up everything perfectly, including moving my feet. So there's a lot of things that I have to adapt to. And it's only once I experience, once I finally have adapted to that specific player I'm playing with or that specific shot I'm doing, that I actually feel calm and relaxed. That's, this is an interesting feeling. When I'm not adapted, I feel frustrated, I feel angry at myself. I still do that. I, I do that a lot. I get very angry at myself when I don't hit a shot the way it's supposed to be done. Part of adaptation is wanting to match the constraints of the context as perfectly as possible. That For hitting a forehand, that means hitting the forehand precisely or perfectly every single time. I say that it's important to be perfect when you're playing the sport. I don't mean that you have to be successful or have a successful outcome. What I mean by perfect is hitting a perfect shot, regardless of where, what situation you're in. So if I fail at that, if I don't hit that perfect shot, if I don't have the racket head low enough, if I don't, if I don't have the right racket head speed, if, my, if my, I'm too close to the ball, or if, I, I'm, if my feet aren't in the right position, all of those are failures, and I get angry at myself when I do that because I'm not, I haven't adapted correctly to that shot. And that anger is disequilibrium. So psychoadaptation is all about experiencing equilibrium. You have to know the constraints of the given situation, and the situation could be an actual physical situation, or it could be a, a, a shot in a sport, like hitting a forehand, or hitting a backhand, or hitting a serve. It could be a, hitting a specific type of serve, like I like to hit the kick serve, so hitting the kick serve. Um, and each of those has its own rules, right? And, and to master the skill, one has to match one's performance to those rules. And that's what adaptation is, right? So the rules are the constraints, the context is the situation, 
So we have contextual constraints, right? So each, each situation has its own set of constraints, we call them contextual constraints, and one has to be able to adapt one's performance to those constraints. And when one adapts precisely to that situation, one experiences equilibrium. And when one experiences equilibrium, one is at peace. Sometimes that happens to me. And again, I didn't start playing when I was young. I started playing later on. I watch kids play. Kids ha are, who, who, who started very, very young, and maybe they're in their teens now. You watch these. You watch these players play. They don't miss. They don't miss balls because they're so used to hitting. They've been hitting since they were little kids. They have such nice, fluid strokes. It looks beautiful. And then you have older people like myself who never had that training early on, we are not as consistent. Sometimes we'll hit really beautiful shots, but we can't do it over and over again. So if you watch the college player, the college player who's been playing for, especially the ones at a D1 school, who've been playing for a long, long time, they have very, very fluid strokes because they've been doing it over and over again and they've adapted to the situation. And here's the key, not only have they adapted to hitting that perfect shot, which is what you get when you get fed by a coach, they can hit that same shot in a variety of situations. And they've experienced so many different situations that they've adapted to every one of those situations. And that's a, the ultimate of psychoadaptation, is to be able to generalize one's ad, ad, adaptation from situation to situation. That's what's really cool. So when I, I was hitting with um, my coach, call him a coach, he was like half, more than half my age. Um, so we hit together. And this one day, I'm just on, I'm in the zone, and I'm just like hitting everything, and I'm feeling it. And the reason is because I've worked so hard, and regardless of how he hits the ball, where he hits it, I'm hitting the ball back, deep, high over the net, and I am feeling in the zone, forehand, backhand. That was an amazing experience. When that happens, and I said the word zone, right? When that happens in athletics, the individual is apt to get into this situation called the zone. It's this perfect, this perfect, this, this disappearance of the boundary between person and one's environment. It's like nirvana to the to the religious individuals. It's um, I actually call it the oceanic feeling in psychoadaptation. It's this unique feeling where there are there are no more adaptations to occur, and one feels this this amazing blissful state. It's, it's the most beautiful experience one can have, and it only occurs once one has adapted to a variety of situations or has actually mastered one's context. It doesn't last. It's not perpetual. Right? The reason for it, its, it's um, ephemeral nature is that is that we keep on needing to adapt again as we progress. And this is what differentiates somebody who's truly successful from someone who's not successful. The successful person will keep on seeking new challenges and will have to adapt anew. The less successful person will be confident and happy within that context and fearful to leave that context because leaving that context would mean more disequilibrium and I need to adapt again. So for myself, I mean, I could be happy just hitting with my coach forever, but then that's I, I have this desire, right? Desire to try something new, so I go and play with other players. I put myself in situations where I, I haven't been as successful before, an ability to adapt to those situations, an ability to play the same way in those situations as I do in the situation where I'm just practicing. That's what is the hallmark of true adaptation and the ability to experience this oceanic feeling. I also, as I mentioned, I do t uh, skiing a lot now. I'm far worse <laughs> in skiing than I am with tennis because I've, I haven't been doing it that long. My son, he's been skiing since, um, say, I don't know, fourth grade or so. We, we went a few times before that, but he didn't have the, 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 the um, discipline in order to really do it well. And then now he, he does um, he started doing ski racing, and he's, he's doing his own adaptation. He's working with his team at Blue Mountain Racing. And I'm myself, I'm also working out with an adult version of this program, and, and I love it. 
I love it, but I am way less proficient in skiing. So I watch myself ski compared to the other ski racers. And these, some of these people have been skiing and racing forever. And they are so good. They're on their edges when they're skiing. And I'm like barely on my edges. <laughs> more, more, more like skidding than on my edges. But I'm adapting. I'm listening to my coaches. Uh, first thing that I had to adapt to was getting over the fear of of steepness and with now I have no fear of steepness anymore. I mean, you know, when you start skiing, you can go on a, a, a very easy trail, like a green trail, and it looks scary as heck. Very, very steep. However, after a while those become very easy. And then you know you go on the blue trails, which is then easy so in skiing you have green, blue, black, diamonds, double black, triple black diamonds, whatever. It's just an expert trails. Um, as you move up, everything becomes easier and easier. To the point now, now we ski blacks and double blacks, and it depends where we're at. In some places, you know, these these designations are very resort specific, right? So, um, but anyway, I've been through so many different situations now that in skiing that I've actually been able to feel that that same kind of equilibrium across different situations. But there are situations that I'm not as good as. I, like for instance, I can't stand when the snow is um, slushy. I get nervous that I'm going to break my leg, like fall into some rut or something, or when, when the places are too busy. So we went skiing this past weekend. We were up in uh, Killington and Okemo, and in Killington, this is in Vermont, there were, they had a lot of trails open, well, for, for, for a bad season so far because it's been kind of warm, but there were also tons of people that were just Killington's nature, and it started just bothering me because people were flying all over the place. And I, I got injured before skiing when the snowboarder hit me. But... So I wasn't very adapted to that situation. There's, so there's situations that I'm not well adjusted to. And when I don't feel like I'm a well adapted, instead of fleeing, what I do is I progress because I want to adapt, I want to be better. And that's part of what makes me able to adapt to these this different situations. Like this year I'm going to be doing my second year of this ski racing program and I'm excited about it, but for the first few days I'm going to have to adapt again. i got new skis. And, Better quality skis, better, faster skis, and you know, I, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna have to adapt again, and hopefully this year I'll make more progress. And I've already seen it, some of the progress I've made, because I am willing to, and and I desire to adapt. I'm always looking to adapt to the constraints of the situation. And, and in sports like skiing, just like in tennis, where tennis, where the, the your opponent is gonna change the constraints of the game for you, right? So does skiing because the weather is not consistent. The, the snow texture, the, the, the nothing is consistent. You could one day it could be perfect, the way I like it, and and we each have our own liking for for courses. It could be perfect one day, but the next day it could be just totally different, right? So those constraints have to change, and I have to adapt to them again. And then one day, once I've adapted to all of them, I'll feel that same oceanic feeling of skiing as I do when I'm playing tennis. All right, so let me wrap this up then. And, 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 I, and this is an important topic because one thing I've learned, and I'm in public health, right, is that the reason people don't exercise a lot is because exercising is boring as heck and it's very repetitive and it's hard, highly unmotivating unless one finds something that one loves. So I love tennis. I'm willing to put a lot of money into it, I put a really nice racket, shoes, etc. I play really hard, I get my rackets to be strong whenever I need them. And I, put, I put a lot of money into it, which is great for the industry, right? For tennis coaches. I love tennis coaches. I know a lot of them. Um, I love it. And so I'm willing to do it regardless of the weather. I'm, it's in the, you know, it hasn't been a great winter yet. It's been kind of a little bit warm. So I've been out playing, but it's played out in cold conditions where other people wouldn't play just because I want to play or, you know, I want to, I desire it, so therefore I want to exercise. I get exercise, not because I want to exercise, excuse me, I shouldn't say that, I get exercise because I love playing tennis, just like I love skiing. So, I mean, we already ski twice, it's on December 2nd today. I already ski twice this year because I love it and I'm willing to put the money into it the effort into it. And I also love cycling, and I have my bicycle, and I'm just willing to spend the time in it. I, I, I use the equipment that I purchased because I love it. So you, um, if you're motivated to do something, you will do it. And if in, in public health, if you want to get people to exercise, 
we have to have them do the things that they love to do. So we have to help them find their niche, right? Their sport, whatever it is. And I think that's a, that's an important message. But then once you find it, you have to adapt. But if you're motivated to do it, you're willing to adapt. And that's how psychoadaptation fits with sports skills for old people like me and for young people as well. All right, thanks a lot. Talk to you next time. By the way, do you like that airplane? Pretty, huh? Very, very pretty. Bye.